A new product is kind of like a tiny baby bird. It hatches out of someone's mind into an idea, and then there comes a time when it is kicked out of the nest and it must fly or fall on the ground. comes a moment where that bird takes wing and flies and becomes a successful mainstream product. And that moment has come for Shark Bite. And this camera is the reason why. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The Runcam Micro HD that you're seeing in this video was sent to me by Runcam, the Foxier Digisite I purchased by myself. I have not received any cash or other compensation in exchange for this video, and no one has had any control or pre-approval over the things I say in this video. The first camera that we're looking at today is the Runcam Micro HD. It's a new camera for the SharkBite video system. And some people are saying it's the best SharkBite has ever looked. We're going to compare it with what I think is currently the best camera that SharkBite has, the Foxier DigiSight. And we'll, put, we'll see some flight footage and other tests a little later in the video. But before we do that, I want to talk about why this camera is labeled HD0 Runcam and not just run cam and what that means for the present and the future of the SharkBite system. You see, the way that a run of cameras normally works is the company like Runcam or Foxier puts up the money, they make the cameras and then they sell them. And whether that's a DJI camera or an analog camera, that's all internal to the company. But when Carl Zhao approached the camera manufacturers about making the best camera for the SharkBite system, they didn't want to do that. And I'm not like spilling the tea here. This is not insider info. This has been talked about by Carl on Facebook and in other places. So Carl put up his own money and he paid Runcam all of the money to make this camera. And that's why the initial run of this camera was only a thousand units. Runcam didn't have the faith that there was enough demand for SharkBite cameras to do a much bigger run like would normally be done. And Runcam's not the only one here. The Foxier Apollo, the new DJI camera from Foxier, it also is coming out in a SharkBite version, two identical cameras, one for SharkBite, one for DJI. I'm, I have been told, I haven't verified this, but people have said on my live stream in the comments that Foxier wasn't going to do a SharkBite version until people kind of hassled them in their comments and then they said, okay, we'll do it. But the release of this Runcam HD0 camera has told us something very, very significant about SharkBite. Because this camera was released in lots of 200, and so far the first two of those lots have been released, and both of them sold out in under two minutes. They sold out instantly. There's every indication that that's going to happen for the whole run of a thousand. So what does that mean for SharkBite? Well, We'll talk about that more in the conclusion of the video. In the meantime, let's take a look at some flight footage from the Foxier DigiSight, and let's see how that compares to this new camera from Runcam, and if all the hype and demand for this camera really is worth it, or maybe you'd rather get one that you can actually get in stock. Well, all right, folks, it's time for the flight testing, and I'm not gonna make you wait. This is the Runcam HD Zero camera. You can see for yourself whether you think it lives up to the hype. And we are gonna do the Foxer DigiSight next, so I hope you'll stick around for that and see uh, how well you think it holds up compared to the holy grail of shark bite cameras, which is what we're looking at now. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we'll go out to the field and we will just look at these trees. I did this on my recent DJI testing and I think it's a great way of seeing how the camera handles shadow. There's shadows under the trees, there's bright clouds in the sky and you can see the general uh, dynamic range of the camera. How dark are the shadows versus how much detail you can see there. I see that some of the shadows are going to complete blackness. 
great highlight handling as we look into the sun behind the clouds. And as I go back and forth, you can see the exposure algorithm going back and forth. Speaking of the exposure algorithm, now we're gonna fly behind the barn. Don't worry about the construction that's happening in my yard. I'll find out about that later. Um, we're gonna go behind the barn and you can see Right about there, it looked to me like the exposure algorithm opened up where you could see a little bit of detail going into there. So you can see what you think of that and you can compare it side to side with the Foxier Digisite as we get into the next segment. Uh, now we're just gonna do some flying around and you can see what you think. Uh, oh, right, the elephant in the room. What, what's happening with the side of the uh, image? Yeah, so the uh, Runcam HD0 camera is shorter front to back than most other cameras that of this size. And that means that when I mounted it in the 250 frame, the uh, the frame, the sides, side plates, the camera plates, it was too far back and the camera plates were in the view. On the Foxier Digisite, you can just barely see it. Uh, but uh, on this one, yeah, you, you'd have to find some way to push the camera forward, maybe with 3D printed or some kind of a bracket. Now let's fly through the trees. And I do this because I think flying through this scraggle and branches gives you a really realistic sense of how much resolution the camera is effective. Not just like a number on a page, 720p, but how much actual effective resolution and detail you can see. Well, now it's time for the ultimate torture test. And I normally only do what I'm about to do on DJI. Analog and shark bite until now, I just haven't felt the confidence that flying through the woods like this, that I would be able to see the scraggle and get out of it. But let's do it. All right, now it's time for the moment of truth. You're still looking at the wrong cam HD0 camera right now, and in just a second, I'm gonna switch to the Foxier Digisite. Okay, here. This is the Foxier Digisite with basically the same image. Hang on, go back. Run cam HD0, Foxier Digisite. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I'm gonna let you draw your own conclusions, but, um, yeah. All right, well, let's fly up in the sky and take a look at the image handling, uh, the light handling here. Um, sky looks real good. Shadows are, seem a little bit darker. It feels like the uh, run cam has maybe just a little bit more shadow detail. Mm, hard to say, it depends on the lighting condition. Um, the color is a little different too. Uh, it, it sure feels to me like this one has less uh, resolution. Uh, here, looking at the trees, the shadows look much lighter. It seems like we're getting more dynamic range from this camera. And we'll go back and forth uh, to try to test the exposure algorithm. Seems pretty good. There's just a little bit of haze in the lens that I associate with plastic lenses. I don't know for sure whether this has a plastic lens, uh, but there's just that little bit of haze in the lens that I associate with uh, plastic lenses. I, looking at this footage here in editing, I see the uh, flashes and speckles that previously uh, were associated with my Wi-Fi network. Um, uh, we are on race band eight. We definitely are on race band eight. But we are standing in the normal location where I fly. And I feel like I have to acknowledge that um, that, uh, I mean, some people are gonna say, well, why don't you turn your Wi-Fi off like I did when I redid the last test. Um, a lot of people fly in places where there's Wi-Fi and yeah, the Wi-Fi access point is maybe 35 feet from where I'm standing. But I, uh, you know, being on channel race eight means that we're getting uh, less interference than uh, we normally would, but uh, we definitely have to acknowledge that, especially when the signal is weak. Like right now it looks really good, but sometimes when the signal is weak, those speckles come back and I just want to acknowledge it before the 
comment section blows up. All right, we're flying near the near the tree branches so we can see the details. It looks pretty good. Uh, if I hadn't just looked at the Fox here or the Runcam HD Zero camera, I would be complimenting this. But uh, having haven't gone back and forth with these guys several times here in the uh, quote unquote editing booth, I gotta say, this one's good. But man, I feel like didn't oh. I said, uh, I said I was going to let you make up your own opinion. Okay, you go right ahead and do that. <laughs> now let's put the two cameras side by side and do just the very beginning of that flight through the woods. And I, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to adjust the speed of the clips just slightly. Right now they're at one third speed and I'm going to slightly speed up and slow down the clips to keep them in sync. Uh, but since it's at one third speed anyway, it shouldn't affect the image quality very much. In fact, going slower is gonna help you to deal with it and let you really see the details. And the first thing I notice here is that the Runcam HD Zero definitely seems to be doing more sharpening. Uh, it looks like a little bit more of a sharpened image, whereas the Fox here looks softer, but it also sure looks to me like there's just more resolution on the Runcam, uh, not just fake sharpening detail. So that brings us to the end of the video and as always the question should you buy it and in this case that question may be moot. If you looked at the footage you compared the Foxer Digisite to the Runcam HD0 camera and you said that the HD0 is the best you've ever seen Sharkbite look it doesn't matter because they made a thousand of them and they're releasing them as of today they've done two 200 camera drops and there are three more to go and they're selling out in minutes and a whole bunch of people are annoyed that they want it and they didn't get to buy it. But that's good because if you are watching this at some point weeks or months into the future, I hope you'll look down in the video description and you will see a link to where you can buy the Runcam HD0 camera if that's the one you like the best or as of today, you could still get the Pro site. It's still in stock everywhere. Why is it not selling out? It's way, way, oh, well, I bet there's a lot of people who already bought the Pro site and think the Runcam camera's better and are wanting to upgrade. Hmm. My point is this. There's clearly a lot of demand for these cameras. And I hope that motivates, well, Runcam in this case, but also other camera manufacturers to start making more cameras for this system. Because as much as HD0 believes in the system and wants to make it a success, that's why recently the SharkBite module was on sale for 99 bucks. Now the price has gone up to 150 bucks, but it's still, you could still get it at lower than the official retail of 250 bucks. They want people using this. They want it to, be, to gain that critical mass that says, hey, baby bird, you're not a baby bird anymore. You're soaring in the sky with the eagles or whatever. That's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Happy flying. Patrons are the people who make all this possible. Not to disrespect you because you're watching all the way to the end, which really helps the analytics. So I guess without you watching, none of this would be possible. But if you would subscribe or join my Patreon, $2 a month or more, it's up to you. Or at the very least, you know, leave a comment or click the affiliate links and do the show. Isn't it a beautiful day? Man, the lighting looks good out here. What's up, y'all? Out for a walk.